The first topic that is going to be covered in this course is basics of radio frequency circuit design. And I will go through, uh, again, basics of wireless transmitters and receivers. This is followed by uh, an extensive discussion about the power transfer in radio frequency circuits. Then I will uh, switch my attention to the study of linearity in large signal circuits. This is followed by noise. And finally, I will discuss sensitivity and dynamic range. First, let's look at fundamentals of wireless transmitters and receivers. And to appreciate the level of complexity involved in uh, simple wireless communication uh, taking place in our smartphone, for example, let's start with an example. Uh, suppose that you would like to uh, speak, speak with your friend on your smartphone. And I'm going to go through basics of operation that is uh, occurring uh, during the uh, wireless communication, establishing the connectivity between uh, these two smartphones. First, as you talk, uh, then as uh, as you talk, then the microphone uh, is uh, taking care of taking care of the uh, conversion of the voice signal to electrical signal, and this is by the way shown in the system block diagram in this slide that is shown here, and you see that. The voice signal occupying a uh, the, the bandwidth of around 10 kilohertz is uh, uh, converted to electrical signal. And then this electrical signal is, after some processing, which I'm going to cover in this course, um, is going to be fed to the transmit antenna. The basic operation or signal processing, however, would be some form of ampli amplification. And to ensure that this amplification uh, maximally uh, transfers the power from the port of the microphone to the uh, transmitter antenna, we are using input matching networks at the uh, input and output matching networks um, uh, surrounding the amplifier. And once the signal is getting ready for uh, to be to be broadcast, um, then the transmit antenna is sending out the signal uh, toward the uh, toward the uh, receiver. And on the receiver side, the receiver antenna receives the signal and following some processing is uh, feeding the signal to the uh, speaker. The basic operation, which is uh, at least in this uh, simplified block diagram, uh, involves is uh, signal amplification. Now, uh, with no level of complexity, uh, just a simple amplification, we would like to see what kind of problem or what kind of fundamental problem this uh, uh, basic uh, form of uh, wireless transmitter receiver should deal with. And uh, uh, more specifically, uh, if we want to use such basic uh, scenario, we would like to see how large of the size the transmitter and receiver antenna should be. And to answer this question, consider uh, a simple dipole antenna, half-wave dipole antenna, which I'm drawing here, com uh, comprising of two legs. Two L-shaped uh, legs, one which is shown here, and the other one, which is shown here. And let's assume that this is my half-wave dipole antenna. End-to-end -end length of this antenna is non over 2. And um, considering, the, considering that lambda has a relationship with the speed of light and frequency, the length of this uh, uh, dipole antenna is equal to C over 2F, C being the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meter per second. And... Let's assume that uh, you know the voice uh, signal with no processing is being sent out by this antenna. Therefore, it has a frequency of around 10 kilohertz, two times 10 kilohertz. This leads to an antenna size of 1.5 times 10 to the power of four meter, which is which is excessively large, right? Now, how to alleviate uh, address this issue? Uh, we leverage the relationship that lambda has with frequency, uh, specifically. The wavelength is inversely proportional to frequency. If that's the case, then uh, let's see if we want to redesign this antenna to uh, uh, radiate a 3 gigahertz frequency, what would be the size of this antenna? Again, writing this equation, assuming that this antenna is redesigned to radiate a frequency of uh, a signal with a frequency of 3 gigahertz, uh, this is a relationship, and therefore, uh, a straightforward relationship uh, indicates that the length of the antenna becomes five centimeters. So uh, bringing this frequency up to three gigahertz helps us uh, in decrease, substantially decrease the effective size of the antenna. Therefore, uh, one answer to this fundamental question of uh, how to tackle the incredibly large antenna is to make sure that we deal with the signals or we process the signals at very high frequencies. But how? 
One way of doing this is by the so-called up conversion of the voice band to the gigahertz frequency. And in order to do this, uh, as is shown in the figure in this slide, uh, what we do is that we take the voice signal, uh, which in this figure is uh, x of t, and then multiply this signal with a single tone or a cosine function at frequency fc. As a result of this multiplication, the signal is going to modulate the, car the so-called carrier uh, single tone frequency at fc and leads to this output wave. Now, uh, while the time domain waveform is time domain analysis is a straightforward, um, much uh, knowledge and insight can be uh, can be can be gained by looking at the signal and the processing uh, in the frequency domain. And in order to understand the signal operation in frequency domain, uh, let's assume that we have the signal at x of t, and x of t is multiplied by the cosine function at frequency f c. And the Fourier, let's take a Fourier transform of this signal, multiplication in time domain is converted to convolution in the frequency domain. So we have x of f convolved with the Fourier transform of uh, cosine function. It leads to, as we know from our signal six system course, it creates two uh, doubles, uh, two impulses, one at frequency minus fc and the other one uh, at frequency fc. And convolution of this uh, uh, spectrum with two impulses, in fact, places the spectrum right at the center frequencies fc and minus fc. In other words, the uh, resulting operation uh, leads to uh, double sideband signal. And what it means here is that by simply multiplying the signal uh, with, a, with a cosine function, we can in fact translate the uh, voice spectrum uh, and place it around the carrier frequency. Now, assuming the carry frequency is, long, is around 2 gigahertz or 3 gigahertz, that means that, you know, the antenna size required to uh, radiate or broadcast such signal is uh, substantially reduced. Now, uh, if you look at the basic kind of uh, modification of uh, to the fundamental transmitter that we discuss, uh, including the notion of the up-conversion, uh, we arrive at the system block diagram that is shown in this slide, where again, the signal is received by the microphone and now is fed to the so-called mixer or up-conversion mixer, which is shown here. And the up-conversion mix, uh, mixer takes care of the uh, frequency up-conversion and in order to uh, perform this frequency of conversion, we need to have an oscillator. In particular, we would like to have an oscillator whose frequency is under our control. And as a result, we are using a special, a special type of oscillator, which we call voltage control oscillator, uh, where the frequency is controlled by the voltage, externally controlled voltage. And once the signal, the so-called baseband signal or voice signal is getting multiplied by the uh, signal, the single tone coming out of the oscillator, then the signal is up converted as I showed in, uh, in the previous slide. And the signal is then uh, fed to the antenna, but before uh, being fed to the antenna, due to the fact that the signal needs to be transmitted over long distance, we must amplify the signal right before the transmitter antenna. And therefore we uh, interject a power amplifier between the mixer and the, transmit ante uh, and the transmitter antenna. And as a result, uh, we come up with this kind of uh, modified, the modified version of the transmitter architecture that uh, I discussed at the beginning. What's going to happen on the receiver side? Uh, in fact, quite interestingly, uh, a similar operation is going to uh, take place uh, on the receiver side. Again, we are dealing with uh, the uh, issue of incredibly large antenna, but the good news here is that the signal is already up converted to higher frequencies uh, at, uh, around the carrier frequency, gigahertz carrier frequency on the transmitter side. Therefore, the receiver antenna likewise is uh, very small. Now, in order to extract the signal on the receiver side, we have to uh, down convert the baseband, the, the passband signal, the received passband signal, and then extract the uh, baseband signal. But how can we do this? As shown in the figure in this slide, uh, the receiver spectrum, which is a bandpass signal, is uh, multiplied by another cosine function, or in the frequency domain, is convolved by the, uh, by the signal, by another cosine function. And then as a result of this convolution, uh, we have uh, three components, frequency components, 
two at um, the frequencies plus minus two if c and the other one located at the zero frequency uh, the operator in order to prove that that's the case consider that we have the received signal i call it xrf xrt the xrt is multiplied by another cosine function let's say 2p 2 pi fct and uh, if we do the multi uh, the, uh, if we perform the Fourier transform uh, we know that xrt is in fact a bandpass signal and as a result has two uh, frequency components one at uh, frequencies around the carrier frequency and the other one at uh, minus fc right and then with this uh, the multiplication turns into the convolution in the frequency domain and uh, we know that the, what the Fourier transform of cosine function is a double sideband impulse function as a result of this multiplication uh, as uh, uh, I explained we, as is clear in this graph or in this picture you see that uh, three components will appear and the one that is located at uh, around the DC frequencies of, uh, is of interest. And in order to um, extract this, obviously we take the signal. So we have two, uh, uh, three components, one at minus FC, the other one with uh, bigger amplitude at around DC frequency and the other one at FC. Now, uh, low pass filter simply uh, will take care of the uh, low pass filter around the DC frequency can reliably extract the signal. Okay, so uh, therefore the operation seems to be uh, straightforward on the receiver side. What we do is that, uh, as is shown in this slide, once the signal is received by the receiver antenna, the signal is fed to uh, uh, should should be fed to a dark on dark converter mixer. But uh, considering that the signal is already very weak we need to first amplify the signal. And due to the fact that the signal strength uh, or the signal power is very small, we want to make sure that the amplifier doesn't add much of noise to the signal, to the, uh, to the point or to the extent that the signal cannot be detected. Therefore, the amplifier is of particular type. This amplifier is called low noise amplifier, meaning uh, it adds minimum noise or a small amount of noise to the signal while amplifying the signal. The signal is amplified by the low noise amplifier and it then is con uh, fed to the down conversion mixer. The other input of the down conversion mi uh, mixer is coming from the low vo voltage control oscillator. And as I discussed uh, in the note, you see that the output of the down conversion mixer has three components. By using a low pass filter centered around the DC frequency with sufficient bandwidth, we would be able to extract the signal. In this course, we also uh, study each individual building block that uh, makes the uh, transmitter receiver architectures. And uh, we will learn that for each building block, we need to have a set of performance parameters to evaluate the performance of these building blocks. For example, for the low noise amplifier, uh, available power gain is of interest. We want to evaluate the noise performance of the low noise amplifier, therefore noise figure is going to be defined. And uh, the linearity of uh, the low noise amplifier is also important, and we're going to discuss the, some performance parameters that evaluate the linearity of the low noise amplifier. As for the mixers, uh, the uh, three important parameters are conversion gain, the noise figure, and the linearity, including uh, high order distortion. And when it comes to the power amplifier uh, on the transmitter side, we want to make sure that the transmitter, the power amplifier, amplifies the signal uh, very efficiently. Therefore, the efficiency of the power amplifier, or in particular, power added efficiency, uh, together with power gain and the output power generated by the power amplifier is important. And we want to make sure that the power amplifier uh, has very good linearity so that the signal is not being distorted by the uh, power amplifier during the amplification. Before going further into uh, the uh, analysis and study of uh, the uh, transmitter receivers and discussing linearity and the noise figure, I would like to also uh, look at the basic units that are used in order to evaluate uh, uh, RF building block. We know that the voltage gain, uh, which is the ratio between the output and the input voltage, uh, can be uh, expressed in terms of dB, and if that's the case, then the voltage gain is simply equals to, equals to 20 log V out over V in. The power gain, on the other hand, measures the amount of power amplification 
and due to the fact that power is equal to or is proportional to the power is proportional to voltage squared then uh, what it means here is that then uh, we basically power is proportional to voltage squared and as a result what we see is that the, the to measure the power in db is uh, the power gain is equal to 10 log p out over p in the absolute signal level is always expressed or often expressed in terms of dbm but what is dbm the signal power in dbm is 10 log uh, the power in terms of milliwatt in order to uh, understand the relationship between the power in dbm and the peak signal and the power in milliwatt consider one example where a power amplifier is supposed to amplify an uh, input rf signal uh, and raises the signal power to 20 dbm and deliver this power to a 50 ohm load the question is what is the peak voltage swing under this condition to calculate the peak voltage swing we know that the signal power is 20 dbm and also the relationship between the signal power and the peak voltage is uh, shown in this uh, relationship in this slide the signal power in dbm is 10 log the peak voltage squared divided by two times the output resistance times 1000 why 1000 because we want to express this power in milliwatt assuming that the power delivered to the 50 ohm load is uh, 20 dbm and assuming that rl is 50 ohm then the signal power in dbm is 10 log 10 times the square value of vm the peak voltage 20 dbm is equal to 10 times the log of 10 times vm squared and after some uh, calculation we see that the peak voltage is equal to 3.16 volts in other words a peak voltage of uh, 3.16 volts appearing across a resistor of 50 ohm a 50 ohm resistor creates or generates a power of uh, 20 dbm this table summarizes some of the frequently used uh, power levels in dbm units and the power values when they are expressed in milliwatts and also in addition the peak and rms voltage values when these powers are delivered to 50 ohm loads uh, for example a 10 dbm output power uh, a, 10, a 10 dbm output power expressed in milliwatt becomes 10 milliwatt and this 10 milliwatt over a 50 ohm resistance delivered to a 50 ohm resistance uh, requires one volt of vo uh, peak voltage on the uh, on this resistance uh, leading to uh, an rms voltage of around 707 millivolt millivolt okay so let's continue uh, 